Robin Hood, Chapter 5, A Daring Rescue When the sheriff failed to take Robin by law and tricks, he tried might. He ordered 300 men to Sherwood Forest to capture the outlaw, dead or alive, for a reward of 100 pounds of silver. When Robin Hood of the sheriff's plan, he said, Force brings blood. I killed a man once, and I do not wish to kill a man again. So his band stayed hidden in the depths of the forest for seven days, and for seven days the sheriff's men hunted through the forest glades, but did not see one man in Lincoln Green. Early in the morning of the eighth day, Robin said to his men, Now who will go and find where the sheriff's men are by this time? Every man leaped at the chance, but Robin chose Will Stutley, saying he was the slyest old fox in Sherwood. Will dressed himself in a friar's robe and hid a great sword beneath it. As he set off for the Blue Boar Inn, he said to himself, Good Eden will tell me all the news. At the sign of the Blue Boar, he found a band of the sheriff's men drinking noisily. Without a word to anyone, for he feared his voice might be recognized, he sat down in a corner and waited to speak to the innkeeper alone. As he sat, a large house cat rubbed against his knee, raising his robe a bit. Stutley quickly pushed his robe down again, but one of the sheriff's men had already seen the Lincoln Green beneath his robe. Meanwhile, Robin Hood was standing under the greenwood tree, thinking of Will Stutley and how he might be, when he saw two of his men running down the path with Macon, the innkeeper's daughter. Will Stutley has been captured, she cried and I fear he is hurt badly. They say he will hang in Nottingham tomorrow. He shall not, cried Robin, and he blew three loud blasts on his horn. Tomorrow I will bring Will Stutley back, or I will die with him. And all the band agreed. The next day, they all made their way from Sherwood by separate paths to meet in Adele outside Nottingham. Robin sent young David of Doncaster to learn the place and hour set for the hanging. Then he called the band around him and said, We go straight to town and mix with the people there. Keep one another in sight. Strike no man without need. But if you do strike, strike hard. Then keep all together till we get back to Sherwood. Let no man leave his fellows. There was a bustle in Nottingham, and crowds filled the streets, knowing that the famous Will Stutley was to be hanged. In the midst of the sheriff's guard, tied in a cart rode Will. His face was pale and his hair was matted with blood from his wounds. He looked up and down the crowds as he passed. Some faces showed pity and some friendliness, but when he saw no one that he knew, his face sank. He remembered the forest, the wild deer, and the laughter of his friends. He looked upon death as a sad thing and he bowed his head. Then came a bustle of noise, and the man tried to push between the guards to reach the cart. When Stutley saw that it was Little John, his heart leaped, for Robin's band was on every side of him. Little John struck a guard full on the head and leaped into the cart. You shall not leave us without saying goodbye, Will, he said, cutting Will's bonds. Swords flashed in the setting sun, and a score of arrows whistled through the air. The sheriff rode down on Little John, but he ducked quickly, and the blow passed harmlessly over his head. Robin Hood and his band pushed the guards back, sending a stream of arrows after them as they ran. Stay, shouted Will to the sheriff. You will never catch Robin Hood if you don't meet him face to face. Then Will Stutley turned to Little John, and tears ran from his eyes. My own true friend, I thought I would see you next in heaven, he cried. Little John could not answer. He was weeping also. Then Robin Hood gathered his band together with Will Stutley in their midst, and they moved slowly away toward the Sherwood. But they left ten of the sheriff's men lying on the ground wounded. Thus the sheriff tried three times to take Robin Hood and failed three times. His warrant failed, his trap failed, and his army in Sherwood failed. This last time frightened him, for he came near to losing his own life, so he stayed inside his castle for many days, ashamed of what had happened in Sherwood that day. End of chapter 5